In this episode of the podcast, we have a really beautiful birth story from Haley, who is a student in my childbirth education class, the birth preparation course. Welcome to the All About Pregnancy and Birth podcast. I'm Dr. Nicole Calloway Rankins, a board certified OBGYN who's been in practice for nearly 15 years. I've had the privilege of helping over 1,000 babies into this world, and I'm here to help you be calm, confident, and empowered to have a beautiful pregnancy and birth. Quick note, this podcast is for educational purposes only and is not a substitute for medical advice. Check out the full disclaimer at drnicolerankins.com forward slash disclaimer. Now let's get to it. Hello there. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. This is episode number 199. Whether this is your first time tuning in or you've been here before, I am so glad that you're spending some of your time with me today. In today's episode, we have Haley. Haley is a mom to the happiest baby boy. She's a military spouse who lives in Omaha, Nebraska, but Virginia is and always will be home. Haley played collegiate field hockey, and she also has her master's in sports and recreation science. She's currently a stay-at-home mom while her husband is deployed, but when he's home, she coaches at Orange Theory Fitness. Now, this was Haley's first birth, and she started feeling contractions at about 1.30 in the morning. She knew from taking my birth preparation course she, that she needed to labor at home for as long as possible since she really wanted to try for an unmedicated birth. However, after about an hour and a half, the contractions were so intense that she knew she needed to go to the hospital. That's one of the things that I also teach is to pay attention to your body. And if your body's telling you, hey, things are intense, it's time to go, then go ahead and go in. And that's exactly what Haley did. Well, when she arrived at the hospital, she was nine centimeters dilated. And you are going to have to tune in to hear how the rest of this beautiful birth story unfolded. Now, I love talking about birth stories. And of course, I love talking to students inside my birth preparation course. Haley was such fun to chat with. And if you want to get a feel for what it's like to be part of the birth preparation course and my teaching style, then I have something great you can check out. And that is my live birth plan class, Make a Birth Plan the Right Way. This class is going to be on Tuesday, March 21st, and this is a great class. Okay, let me tell you what's in the class. So the way most people make a birth plan is wrong. They fill out one of those templates or forms that they find online. They bring it with them to the hospital. They may bring it to the prenatal visit, but they don't actually go through it with their doctor or midwife to make sure that the doctor and hospital actually support what is in that piece of paper. So what can happen is if you just fill out one of those templates and forms, you show up, you hand it to the folks at the hospital and they're like, yeah, we don't do that, won't do that, won't do that either. And then you're stuck. So in my live birth plan class, I give you a workbook that you can use to talk to your doctor about your birth plan. I go through some key questions that you need to ask in order to know whether or not your doctor and hospital support what is in your birth plan. I give you tips to help you make sure that the doctors and nurses pay attention to your birth plan and just advice on how to have that conversation so you're well prepared before the hospital and know that the hospital and doctors support what's in your birth plan. This is really, 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 really important. So you can sign up for the class at drnicolerankins.com forward slash register. Again, that is going to be a live class on Tuesday, March 21st. Spots are limited, so go ahead and sign up now and secure your spot today. All right, let's get into the beautiful birth story with Haley. Well, Haley, thank you so much for agreeing to come onto the podcast. I am so excited to have you come share your story. It is a great one. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be on it. Yeah. So why don't you start off by telling us a bit about yourself and your family? Sure. Um, my name is Haley Oaks. Um, I'm a first time mom to the happiest little boy. 
Um, my husband and I are both from Virginia. Oh, what um, part? Fredericksburg, Virginia. Okay. So, yeah, I'm in Richmond, so. Yep, not yep. too far away. I was actually mm. born in Richmond. So. Okay. <laughs> yep. Um, and we have three golden retrievers. Uh, we both went to college here in Virginia. I played field hockey at the University of Mary Washington. Okay. He played soccer at Randolph-Macon, and we met through mutual friends. Um, I then went to Ohio University to get my master's degree while I coached field hockey. And then I coached field hockey collegiately for a couple of years before he joined the Air Force. Mm. And then that moved us to Pensacola, Florida, where we stayed for just over a year. And okay. now we live in Omaha, Nebraska. That's where we're stationed. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. All right. You had a little bit of a tour of everywhere. But Pretty you're, much. You're, like me, born and raised in Virginia. Virginia is always in my heart. So. It will always be home for us, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So let's hop right in um, and talk about your story. So we can't understand the birth without understanding a bit about the pregnancy. So let's start off with what was your pregnancy and your prenatal care like? Sure. So my pregnancy was really wonderful. Um, I didn't have any issues. I felt really good during it. I stayed very active. Um, I'll rewind a little bit, but mm -hmm. prenatally, I became a birth and pregnancy nerd. <laughs> I Back in uh, like the spring of 2020, I found uh -huh. your podcast because I was like, oh, I think maybe in a year or two we'll start trying. And I just right. want to find out everything I can, I can find out about right, it. So right. I found your podcast and as I would travel from Florida, Virginia mm -hmm. to, um, come back home to visit family, I would listen to so many podcasts, 14 hours worth. Wow. And so I just, I just loved learning about pregnancy and mm -hmm. I started taking like a prenatal vitamin about mm -hmm. a year before we started trying okay. and I made my husband take one too. <laughs> you were, you were ready. You were like, we are going to be ready. Yes. yes so, I love it. Yep. So a year out, we were like, okay, we're both going to take this. And not that we were unhealthy people in any way. We both sure. were very active and ate well, but I really was like, okay, we're going to eat a little bit more like whole foods, you know, minimize uh -huh. our processed uh -huh. stuff. Uh -huh. uh, you know, we always worked out, so that wasn't uh, anything different, but I implemented a little bit more yoga. Okay. Um, and then when we were in Pensacola, I actually um, asked for a prenatal like appointment with my uh -huh. OB, uh -huh. but um, through TRICARE, you have to ask your uh, general practitioner to be oh, able to okay. be seen by a women's health clinic. Um, Got it. And it's kind of funny. He was like, uh, I'll get you a referral, but I don't think they'll do that kind of appointment with you. And I was like, I think that they will. Right. Lo and behold, they did. Uh -huh. So he just, you know, probably wasn't on the up to up on everything. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did that appointment and she just kind of gave some recommendations about before planning to start a family, what to do. And, you know, I had a, you know, uh, regular check and a pap uh -huh. smear and everything. And then um, I I stumbled across this preconception testing in your uh -huh. podcast about uh, episode about uh, MMR and like varicella titers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pay. <laughs> I'm telling you, I went crazy. I pay, <laughs> I'll pay out of pocket and oh see if, get these tests done to see right. if I still have titer, if I'm still, right. you know. And actually, I showed negative on my rubella titers. Really? I did. So even though I received everything when I was a baby, uh -huh. it showed that I really didn't have immunity for it. Right. So right. I went to my right. OB. I said, hey, I have these results. Can I get an MMR booster? And she was like, yeah, of course. Right. So I got an MMR booster. And then a month later, we started trying. <laughs> Well, wow. a little over a month later, we sure, started trying. Sure, sure, sure. Wow. Okay. You were like <laughs> textbook prepared. I love it. I love it. And the fact that you were with me from the earlier day, I'm like, wow, she remembers when like I was just barely starting out. I love it. Love I it, have love followed it. you through. It's just everything. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh my goodness. Well, you, this is like, a te I mean, I, I can't like... <laughs> Talk about how anybody can be more prepared. Well, did it ever make you anxious or anything? Or was it just like, 
you know, more information was better. Yeah, honestly, um, I don't think it really made me anxious in any way. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, I'm starting out like a year out and I'm just like going to fully prepare myself. Mm-hmm. And I'm just that I had that personality of I just want to know as much as I can. Yeah. Not not enough to, you know, stress me out in any sure. way, but just sure. to be knowledgeable and prepared with everything because I just feel like I can make way more informed decisions and absolutely and just feel better about the situation. That's how I've always been. So yeah, yeah. 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 So then when you when you all started, um, decided to start trying, how long did it take you to get pregnant? If you don't mind me asking? Sure, it took us two months. So okay. not so, very long. Okay. Yeah. So you were and you had all the information. So you were ready to go. Yeah. And again, I went a little crazy. I took like, um, so I used it's called Prove and they do like LH test um, uh-huh. and then actually progesterone to see if you've uh-huh. successfully ovulated. Right. So um, I did that. And two months later, I found out that I was pregnant. Okay. Nice. Uh, yeah. Nice. Nice. So then where did you go for prenatal care? So we had moved to Omaha um, Mm -hmm. about two months before I found out I was pregnant. And I have TRICARE Prime, so I have Mm -hmm. to be seen on base. Sure. Um, So once I found out that I was pregnant, I had to contact the clinic and they had to have me come in and take one of their tests. And this is a little crazy. I went on on a Friday. Uh-huh. And I had two positive at home pregnancy tests. Right. They called me, said, it's negative. I, and I was like, mm. I would started getting anxious. Right. And I was like, they were like, you can come back on Monday. If you, if you've received a positive at home pregnancy, come back on Monday and right. do another one of our tests. Right. Well, I went out and bought 10 tests, yeah. you know, and the positive, the actually written out, pregnant, oh, not right. pregnant, everything. Right. And everything was showing pregnant. So I was like, okay, right. I am. But in the back of my mind, I was just like, why did theirs not come through positive? Right. right. So I spent the weekend kind of like oh, a little anxious. Yeah. yeah. But then Monday I went in and I took another one and it was positive. Okay. So okay. I'm having to guess. They probably had, they did, they did something wrong with the test. Yeah. I'm guessing. So that was, that was a little worrisome, but mm-hmm. it all turned out okay. Okay. Um, okay. And then the way that they handle it is before your first uh, OB appointment, you mm-hmm. have to do an OB class. Um, okay. oh, interesting. Yeah. So around, I want to say eight weeks, uh, uh-huh. they had me come in and I was with other women who were pregnant at the time too. Uh-huh. And they just went over uh, health insurance information. They kind of laid out like a timeline of what your appointments will look like and when and resources that we could use to get pumps or so it was was actually really really great because i feel like it laid out a lot of information um about what it looks like especially doing having a pregnancy through tricare working in a a military hospital and whatnot sure yeah sure that's pretty cool yeah Yeah. that's pretty cool and then so so i know some bases don't always have OB care, but obviously it sounds like yours did. Yes. So Mm -hmm. our base did have OB care. All my appointments were there except for the genetic testing. We had it done at um, University of Nebraska Medical Center. And then the delivery actually was there as well. So they have a partnership with the hospital, um, which was really amazing. Uh, I can't I can't say enough about the hospital there. So, okay. all right, well, we'll, yeah. we'll get to that for sure. Yeah. So then did you see a physician and a midwife and was it different ones? How did that work? Sure. So there were four OBs, mm-hmm. um, physicians mm-hmm. at the clinic and it was just kind of random who you would get. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could ask to be seen by a specific doctor, but there was no guarantee that they would deliver you. It's gotcha. whoever was on call for the hospital that day. Gotcha. So I made a point of wanting to be seen by everybody since mm-hmm. there was a potential to anyone could deliver. Right. Um, my first appointment was at 11 weeks mm-hmm. and the doctor that I saw, um, it was not the best experience mm. because what was, what was, what didn't you like? About um, it? we were, st- the base was wonderful with, uh, doing COVID protocols of wearing uh-huh. a mask and everything. Right. And I come into the room and she has her mask below her mouth. Oh, and, like that um, doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, I just can't stand wearing this all day long. And 
it was a little off-putting and I was like, oh, you know, uh, I'm going to wear mine. (laughs) I really (laughs) didn't know, you know, my husband and I were just kind of baffled a little bit. Um, and she herself was pregnant and uh so we kind she was just kind of matter of fact we did an ultrasound everything looked good um and then you know i asked her about covid booster uh, because that's when they had just come out and i knew what acog recommended but i kind of wanted to see what she had to say about it um and she was like oh well you know if it was up to me i would not have gotten it myself but the military required me to get one so I guess if you want to get one, you can. And um, okay. so it was a little off-putting. Yeah. Um, but I said, okay. And she said, oh, we're, we're due around the same day. Your due date is just a couple days after mine. So I knew she wasn't going to deliver me. <laughs> so I was like, okay, dodge a bullet with right, that one. Right, right, So right. I just didn't see her anymore. Okay. Um, and then... The other three physicians that I saw Mm. through the rest of my care were Mm. amazing, Mm. incredible. So it really, it may have started off a little negative, but I was really thankful to have positive interactions with the rest of the physicians that I saw for the remainder of my pregnancy. Yeah. So that was, that was wonderful. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then you knew that it was going to be one of those three for the delivery. Exactly. Okay. 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 Yeah. So that makes it a little bit easier for you to meet everyone. If it's just three, that's a possible, some folks are in really huge groups. So that's, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you do to prepare for your birth? I did a lot. I was curious to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I had fun with it. Like it right. wasn't overwhelming in any uh-huh. way. So uh-huh. it was enjoyable for me. But I listened to a lot of podcasts. I walked mm-hmm. every day. So I turned on a podcast for my walks and I just right. enjoyed listening while I got right. some exercise and fresh right. air. Usually in the wintertime. In Omaha, I did have to go inside to the gym sometimes. But I was going to say, how cold does it get? pretty cold but okay. if it was 30 or above i was outside walking with my gloves and my okay. wool socks <laughs> okay all right <laughs> so um so i listened to your podcast of mm-hmm. course i listened to evidence-based birth mm-hmm. podcast mm-hmm. loved that one um mommy labor nurse mm-hmm. and then yoga birth babies which i know okay. you had deb on one of mm-hmm. your episodes before so okay um, okay what about the birth hour Oh yes, and, and the birth yeah. hour. Yes, mm-hmm. so yeah, I was. was <laughs> yeah, so I listened to those. Um, I read the Mama Natural Guide, um, uh-huh. pregnancy and birth. I read a Bradley Method uh, book. I cannot remember who that was by. It wasn't by um, Dr. Bradley, but okay. it was about the Bradley Method. Gotcha. And then I read Birthing from Within, per uh-huh. your recommendation. Mm-hmm. Um, I took your birth preparation course. My husband mm-hmm. and I would enjoy our weekends drinking coffee and, right. and going through it together. Love it, love it. Um, uh, what else? I took a breastfeeding course on okay. base. Okay. A pediatrician led it, and that was really wonderful. Nice. Um, I learned a lot about that because I was that was one thing I think I was probably. I wouldn't say most anxious about, but I just mm-hmm. really wanted to be able to breastfeed. So. Sure, 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 um, sure. Let's see. I think. So you did. Now, were you are you were you working during all of this? Like, how yeah. did you fit all of this in? Yes. Yeah, so I was working part time as a personal trainer, but I actually coached Orange at Orange Theory um, oh, yeah. Fitness. Yeah. Uh-huh. So a studio there. So I was working four days a week. Uh-huh. Um, and I did that throughout my whole pregnancy okay. and I, that I love it. I absolutely love being a coach. Um, right. and the member, my members were so awesome during it too. So I stayed active in that way too, just by coaching. Nice. Um, nice. but yeah, nice. so, so yeah. you were, you were fully prepared and ready to go. Pretty much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some things that you wanted for your birth? Uh, I really wanted to try to have an unmedicated birth. Mm -hmm. Um, I really wanted to try to uh, have a spontaneous labor for it to start Mm -hmm. on its own. Not that I can control that, but (laughs) (laughs) Um, I really wanted it to just be my husband and I for the Uh the actual delivery. Okay. And I wanted to have a very calm and uh, 
relaxing environment to labor sure. in, sure. laboring at home as long as possible. Yep. And I wanted just the birth to be calm as well and empowering. Right. Um, right. And then right. I wanted to make sure that all my choices and options mm -hmm. were laid out in front of me um, and just to overall be heard, you know, yeah. by yeah. my doctors Absolutely. and team. Yeah, so. absolutely, absolutely. So did you talk about some of the things that you wanted for your birth with your doctors? Yes, and I brought a list, the, mm -hmm. the next appointment, and went over everything. And, you know, I just asked about laboring positions and what right. resources that the hospital had and if they were on board with, you know, my what I was hoping would happen right. with my birth. And right. they were they were awesome. I asked every doctor, right. you know, each each of the three when I sure. had an appointment with them, sure. and they were all on board. Um, they were fully supportive of wanting to try to go unmedicated, mm -hmm. and um, I let them know of all the resources that I had and mm -hmm. had, um, you know, basically researched. And they were like, "Yeah, you seem like." You're prepared as long right. as everything goes well and you stay you stay healthy, baby stays healthy. We're fully supportive of your wishes and yeah. and what you would like to see happen with your birth. Sure, sure, so. sure. And how did that make you feel going into the experience knowing that you had knowing that you knew that information? Yeah, it just was a relief, but it also felt I just felt so supported. Mm -hmm. um, I felt empowered to be able to um, come up with the right decision, but also that my doctor knew and supported and appreciated my um, my stance and my ability to like uh, have a wealth of information and be able to mm -hmm. have a conversation and talk sure. to them about it. Sure. Um, sure. And to be heard. So I just I felt I felt really fortunate that I had such a positive experience with those those physicians that were yes. on board with my wishes. So love it, love it, love it. So they didn't at all feel threatened that you had more, you know, knowledge. They weren't like irritated that you were asking questions or anything like that. No, actually. So it's kind of funny. Um, there's two OBGYNs. They were identical twin brothers. Oh. And so they were very similar in personality. I almost thought, well, I have a, you know, over 60% chance I'll have one or the right. other. And they're pretty right. much the same. Right, right, right. What are the <laughs> um, chances I know. Of that? Isn't that crazy? And they're, yes. you know, stationed at the same base. So they both, and I just say that because they both were like, keep the questions coming. They never, I never felt rushed during any appointment. They wanted me to feel like I had everything answered that I, that they were listening and able to provide me with feedback mm -hmm. or information. And they never, I don't think they ever felt like, Oh, this know it all or, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. or anything yeah. like that. They were just really, they were actually pretty excited to have somebody come in and be able to like go over the questions sure, and, sure, and go sure. over everything. So yeah. Oh God, you're like giving me hope for our I, system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so then what was your labor and birth like? Okay. So <laughs> at 39, this is the only time where I think the um, two physicians were like, ah, maybe not on the same page with uh -huh. me for, uh -huh. for induction. Okay. Um, so at 39 weeks, um, uh, I was two centimeters dilated okay. and I want to say like 80% of face. Okay. And, um, so like, yeah, you're, you know, you're looking good. Everything's looking great with you and baby. Um, we want to schedule an induction at 40 weeks. And I said, well, is there a reason at 40 mm -hmm. weeks? Because I would really love to try to go, uh, and in spontaneous labor. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you know, the ARRIVE study uh, shows. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, okay, I know what the ARRIVE study right. is. But right. as, you know, a pregnant woman who's healthy, has no underlying issues, baby's healthy, I really would like to see if I could go to 41 weeks for the induction. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we went back and forth a little bit. And he was like, you know what? I... I hear you. Why don't we do 40 in three days? <laughs> so 
So he like was trying to meet in the middle, but I didn't right. really know like his reasonings why besides right. him bringing up the arrived study mm-hmm. and less cesarean sections and C-sections mm-hmm. and stuff. But I said, okay, you know, at least we got a compromise and I'll just try to do everything that I can to, to, oh God, to I not go into the induction. We, 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 you know, we will... We will talk about that damn arrival. I trial. know. Like, you know, but yeah. yet won't talk on the same hand how, like, evidence shows just as convincingly that doulas are helpful. We don't, but yet we don't push those. So that's just like a pet peeve of, of mine. Yeah. But, um, but it sounds um, like you, you were able to come to some sort of. Yeah, we came to a compromise. But then I, I did reach out to you because I was like, I really want to try to go to 41 weeks. Mm-hmm. And you're like, really? There's nothing that, sh- that, should keep you from being able to do that yeah. so then yeah. i called him and i was like hey you know i've really been thinking about it i just if you are on board i would really love to go to 41 weeks he said okay we can do that so he actually did change okay. his mind after okay. i brought forth some information and maybe pestered him a little bit right more. right right um so yeah so then we scheduled it for 41 weeks so that was awesome and um i know this is a little off track but for you mentioned doula care. Yeah. Tricare ha- actually had just started this um, like experimental program of uh-huh. providing doulas oh. to prime patients. But the problem was there was no doula in network in our area oh, at the time okay. because it was okay. so new. Sure. Um, sure. So I wasn't sure. able to utilize a doula. But right now I've heard really wonderful things about that program for TRICARE patients. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Gotcha. Just a little Good. side note. Yeah. Um, okay. So and then at the 39 week appointment, I forgot to say that he did uh, strip my membranes. Okay. And he asked. Okay. Um, I was going to say, yes. He, he did ask. And I said, you know what? that's fine because it might it might it might not help start labor so and it was a little uncomfortable but nothing too bad right um and i don't think anything came of it because uh i didn't have any contractions and around 40 weeks due date came Uh i thought okay well (laughs) <laughs> Still not feeling anything, right, right? But I was, you know, using my birthing ball as a chair. Mm-hmm. Um, I was doing oh, uh, spinning babies mm-hmm. like a daily mm-hmm. yoga flow, which actually I forgot to mention. I did like throughout my whole pregnancy. Okay, I found it like a good way to kind of meditate right. during it and get a good stretch in yep. and just feel yep. at peace with everything. Yeah, and then later on, I started doing it with your affirmations. Uh-huh. Provided from the course, so yeah. so I was doing that. I tried the mile circuit uh-huh. um, for a couple of days, twice a day. I was still doing all my walking that I was right. doing. Right. I was just trying to stay active. Right. Um, I had been eating my dates since thirty-seven weeks. <laughs> right. So, right. 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 So let's see. I was forty weeks and four days. Okay. And it was Mother's Day. Oh. Mother's Day Sunday. I said, oh, how, like, what a wonderful Mother's Day gift. He's right. going to come today. I just right. know it. I have this feeling. Right. So I was, I just felt really tired that day. Mm-hmm. Um, my husband and I just kind of made it a lazy Sunday, stayed on the sofa with our dogs, watched some TV. I napped, which I never nap. <laughs> so, and then, you know, I said, like, I don't really feel too well. I'm going to go take a nice warm shower. Went and showered. And I was like, okay, well, I feel a little bit better, but nothing really came of it. So I told my husband, okay, I'm going to go up to bed. This is probably around 10 p.m. at this point. Right. And I fell asleep and I woke up around 1, 1 1.30 and I felt a little crampy. Okay. And I was like, okay, well, I've never felt this before. So it could be something. So I tried closing my eyes again to go back to sleep and I couldn't. And I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go sit on the toilet. I just felt like. That would be a good place for me at that point. Right, right. So I was sitting there and I thought maybe my water broke, but I uh-huh. wasn't too sure because it wasn't, it was just like a little trickle. Right. But I was like, I don't think I peed. <laughs> I think that was my <laughs> water. Um, and then I felt a contraction for sure. I was okay. like, okay, this is it. I this, know right. this is it. Like, right. Um, right. It was just something that I hadn't experienced, but it just felt like, 
I knew what it was, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So um, I had this uh, Freya app to help with contractions uh-huh. and um, I started it to time it all. And it was starting off like a minute long, four to five minutes apart right away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, am I doing this right? Like, right. This is pretty intense. Like they're ramping right. up pretty quickly. Right. But I was just, you know, I was still on the toilet and then I stand up and I just kind of sway a little bit. I was feeling good, just kind of mm-hmm. like, this is it. Like I know the baby's, co- I just feel right. like, but I was like, right. we'll rush into it, gotta labor at home, right. you know, take it slow. And then it went on for about an hour. Uh-huh. Minute contractions, maybe a little bit longer. And then at this point, it was like a solid four minutes apart or even a little bit less. Okay. I said, what? oh my gosh, like, like this, this is, th- I think this is happening. So right. I went down to my husband who had fallen asleep on the sofa. And I said, I woke him up. I said, hey, like, I think this is happening. Like, I want right. to let you know I'm having contractions. Right. He said, okay, can I go shower? I said, yeah, go shower. Like, we'll right. be fine. He gets in the shower and man, they were like really coming it hard. Just... They were coming fast. I opened the door. I said, hey, I think we're going to have to go to the hospital soon. Right. At this point, it was almost three o'clock in the morning. Okay. So about okay. an hour so and just, a half. Just an hour and a half. An hour okay. and a half. Okay. And I said, I'm going to go get our bags. I already had everything packed. They were ready to go. But I'm going up the stairs. I had to stop. I had to really breathe, focus Mm -hmm. on, okay. Kept going, got the bags, stop, breathe. Like it was just one after another, just coming full on. Brought him back down. He came out. I I opened the door. I said, you need to hurry. We got to go. Right. I was like, I don't care about being at home any longer. It like was just, it was just time. so go. intense. Yes. Right. Um, so we got in the car, everything was ready. That ride, it was only like a 15 minute drive, but it felt like eternity. I was holding on. I was just like, oh, I was like, okay, I got this. And my husband, he was being so supportive. He's like, you can do this. You right. will do this. You know, he was, he was, he was and, yes. And I heard while her, driving. Uh, yes. At four like, o'clock in the morning. That's right. And yes. I was like, I was like, okay, okay. He's like, just breathe. You got this. And we were like, vibing we were like being super positive yes and um i heard your voice you know your affirmations i was like okay dr rankins i got this you know she's (laughs) telling me right (laughs) um and so we get to the hospital we park and luckily at this time in the morning there was like Uh nobody there sure but i get out of the car and i know i hit transition because i was like i can't do it I cannot do it. And he was was like, he was like, you can do it. You've been doing it. You're you're working so hard. Like we're going to see our baby soon. And I was like, okay, like we can do it. We can do it. And so we're walking in and the, uh, delivery or the, the, um, labor and delivery floor is on the fourth floor. So we come in through security and they're doing the COVID checks. And, uh, you know, I'm, kind of vocalizing at this point like and, I'm in reporting yeah. labor yes and they're like okay well uh you know they ask the questions so like okay you're clear they're like do you want a wheelchair I was like no I cannot sit down like I gotta stay standing it just it seemed like it would be too painful to sit right. back down so we used the wheelchair to roll our bags up to the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> like we stacked our bags on the wheelchair um so we get up to the um to the to the floor and um, the doors open and I am going through a contraction. I'm just vocalizing and um, the the nurse shows down. Oh, I think we have a mom in labor. Yes. And I was like, yes, we do. <laughs> so we check in and they're asking for our information. I'm giving it to them, pausing for contractions. And you could tell the nurse was like, oh, this first time mom, she's, <laughs> She's probably, you know, just a couple centimeters dilated. Right, She's right, going through right. it. She has no idea. Right. And so we get back to the room and my actual uh, labor and delivery nurse comes in. That was just, I think, like the triage nurse that uh-huh. checked us in. Uh-huh. And um, so she's like, okay, I need you to uh, pee in this cup. I don't know what it was for. I was kind of out of it. And I didn't remember from like my information, like why. Right. But I could not. I was 
I was like shaking my hands. Like, this is not going to happen, right? Yeah, and I was like, I told her, I was like, I'm so sorry. I I just cannot do it. And she was like, oh, it's okay. Come, Come lay down. Let's check how far along you are. So a resident comes in to check me uh-huh. and she's like, all right, let's check you. And you could tell the nurse and the resident both were like, oh, we're might be in for a bumpy ride here. Like, right. I think she's probably not that far along. And she checks and I remember her face. She was just like, <laughs> you are nine centimeters dilated. We need to get you to the delivery room. <laughs> and I was like, I... I just felt like, oh man, like I had this intuition, like, I feel like I'm so far along, but then I was like second guessing myself because sure. I was like, it's so short. It's only been two and a half hours, you know, right. two and a half, three hours. Yes. <laughs> so, and so I can't like, remember, did you say your si- your sister, does she have a fast labor also? Uh, no. So the, uh, my sister doesn't have any kids. So okay. this is, okay. but okay. my mom, I- my mom did not have a fast labor or anything. So. Okay, I don't know why I got in my head that you had a family member that had a fast labor. Yeah. So then this was completely yeah. out of the blue. Oh yeah, like no, like no warning or nobody else that was like, oh, you right. might have one. Right. Um. So yeah. So we, I walked to the delivery room because I was like, I'm not sitting down. Like it just right. I'm not laying down. I'm not sitting down. Like right. this just feels so much better. So, oh. <laughs> My poor husband, when we got into the room, he was unpacking the candles and the music and he was getting everything he out. Was getting that. Uh-huh. And then she checked me, he was like, nine centimeters. They're like, pack everything up. So he was- <laughs> We're going to another space. Yes. Yeah, so because he was just making sure I had everything the way right. I wanted it. And so he was just, oh so he got it and he was kind of, you know, fumbling around like, oh, we gotta go. So <laughs> We walked down the hall and it's funny because everything seemed like, oh, we got to go. We got to go. But it really wasn't like it shouldn't have been that rush. Like we had time. I was in the hospital, but everybody was like, oh, let's go. Let's go. Um, But the resident did say, I'm glad you didn't really want an epidural because I don't think you would have gotten one anyway. (laughs) So um, (laughs) we get to the delivery room and I believe there were two residents and then my OB from the base uh-huh. was there and it was one of the twins uh-huh. um, and then there were a couple of nurses and then it was my husband so okay. we were all in the okay. room and I when we got into the room I did give my nurse my like birth preferences although uh-huh. a lot of that didn't even need to be because it was just at. happening so fast yes but she did look at the like um, pushing part and I mm-hmm. had said like I would love to try different positions uh-huh. um, that I would really like to try kind of like intuitive pushing uh-huh. um, and so she was like so supportive and voiced to the doctors because they were like all right lay her on her back let's you know teach her how to push you know uh, breathe in and hold and bear down mm-hmm. and then my nurse was like actually she really wants to try on her hands and knees and right. kind of listen to her body right and I was so thankful because I think nice. my husband was so flustered sure. that he couldn't be that voice at that time right and she really made sure that hey you know this mom's coming in and even though a lot of this stuff we can't even do, I'm going to make sure that I'm sharing her voice for the yes. things that we can do. Yes. And I just, she was an angel. Like mm. I, it wasn't for very long, but she, right. she gave counter pressure on my back during compressions. I was on my hands and knees for the first part of pushing. Right. Um, and I was really trying to listen to my body for the pushing part. And she was just, you know, you're doing great. Uh, just keep listening to your body, breathe. And she was really leading me through it. And the residents and the doctors kind of took a little step back and kind of mm-hmm. let her do her thing, which was yeah. really awesome. Um, then it came to a point where I was like, I'm not comfortable like this anymore. I think I mm-hmm. do need to lay down right. on my back and take right. a little break. Um, so she's like, okay. And then at that point, I think I was just so like, ready for him to get there that I was like all right let's try this bear down thing like let's just go in yeah right so at that point I was like I'm ready to like start 
pushing how they're like kind of leading me to. Uh Um, So I start pushing and they're like, you know, uh, the resident was like right here. She was like indicating like if you feel pressure down here, really lead into that during your pushes Uh and kind of focus on that area. So Uh that's what I did. And 45 minutes later, he arrived Nice. And so it wasn't that long of pushing. I Mm. will say it was a little bit scary at first. I think they thought maybe um, it was like shoulder dystocia Uh because they all came in and it's like kind of emergency. It was just his hand by his face. Uh, So uh, it wasn't anything, but it was a little like worrisome at the moment. Like why are these people here? Yeah, for a split second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But then he arrived and they placed him straight on to my chest. Right, and he right. stayed there for an hour and a half. Oh, nice. And it was just everything I could have hoped for. It was just, oh. when I say beautiful, I'm going to get choked up talking about it, but it was, it was so beautiful meeting him. Oh, I and, just love it. See, and, you're going to have me crying on the podcast. <laughs> that yeah. is so special. And it was just, my husband was just, just such a calm present the presence oh. and he was prepared like i made right. sure he was prepared yes and yeah. just everybody in the room some a couple of the nurses or there's only two nurses but i said we've never experienced an unmedicated birth before and um everybody was just it was just so it was just so amazing to feel mm. like the moment in the room, like nothing was panicked. Nothing was, was just... like rushed. It was just calm. It was beautiful. It was peaceful. It was, and he was just taking in everything. He was just so aware. Oh. And I, I just, I, it was so special. I can, I just, I'm so thankful for that moment. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of at a loss at words because it was just, the most incredible moment. And I think for a lot of people in the room, it just felt different. It just felt right. really, really special. Right, right, yeah. right. Oh, that is amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. So I guess I should ask, do you remember feeling like the ring of fire when yes. it was coming out? Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so, so that was definitely, that was definitely felt there. That. Okay. It was a whole lot of pressure and then it was burning. But then like I knew I was like, okay, I'm going to give it a, a big push and right. he's going to be, you know, he'll be here soon. Gotcha. So I gotcha. did feel that. And I feel like I probably skipped over some things, but no. um, yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. And then did you have to get any um, uh, stitches repaired? Or I did. I had a second okay. gr- second degree tear. Okay. Um, and this is so typical of me. Like as they were stitching, I was like flinching a little bit and uh, they did numb me, but I definitely could feel yeah. it. And um, I was like flinching. And I was like, sorry, I'm sorry. They're like, you don't need to apologize. Like you just had a baby. <laughs> like a whole like, human just yeah. came out of your body. Yeah. I was like, I'm so sorry. I'll try to be still. They were like, you were doing great. Just like, oh. you know, you're fine. Right. Right. Um, so I did... But, you know, it was so nice to have him there with on me while that mm-hmm. was happening because mm-hmm. it was kind of like I could focus fully on him and yeah. didn't have to yeah. worry about it. But I did have a second That's degree amazing. tear. Okay. 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 Um, and then they did administer Pitocin uh, mm-hmm. for the placenta, mm-hmm. which I did. That was, I guess, backtracking one thing that I asked if I had to um, mm-hmm. with my physician. Mm-hmm. And he said that for the hospital that it really is something that they want to do because of risk of hemorrhaging. But I knew from like evidence-based birth and your Mm -hmm. podcast that it really didn't need to be administered. But I, at that point I was like, you know what, it's fine. I just do what you need to do. And so then delivered the placenta. They, they did wait to uh, cut the cord until after it was done pulsating. Okay. Good. So that was awesome. Um, and yeah, I think it was just, just a lovely, beautiful experience. Yeah, it was. It yeah. was. Yeah. So then what was postpartum like? Cause I know there were a little bit of a couple of bumps. Yeah. There. Yeah. So thankfully my birth was as beautiful and pretty much 
at the way I wanted it to go Mm -hmm. (laughs) because postpartum was a little challenging. Um, Right after I gave birth, my blood pressure was high, uh, but they were like, you know, that's not abnormal. You, you just delivered. Um, However, as they were checking it around the clock, they were like, yeah, it's still staying a little high and you didn't have high blood pressure at all during your pregnancy. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so they were really good about coming in and checking it. They never gave me medication for it in the hospital, uh, because it was starting to come down the longer I stayed, uh, but it was still kind of hovering around like the one thirties over eighties. Okay. So nothing too crazy. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did stay, so with my insurance, I could stay up to 72 hours. Okay. Um, so I decided to do that because okay. I just thought it would be better to be monitored. Like nobody said, we want to keep an extra eye on, you know, keep you for a little bit longer to keep right. an eye on you. I just thought that it would be a good idea to do. Sure. So um, just get a little peace of mind, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so we um, got discharged after 72 hours and Mm -hmm. we went home and my mom flew in from Virginia Mm -hmm. and she had the house ready for us and she had meals ready for us. So she was there to help us in any way. And um, breastfeeding started off a little challenging as well. Um, He was getting on and latching, but sometimes it took a really long time to get a good latch. Um, So that made me like a little anxious probably. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then I noticed um, my feet were really swollen, like extremely swollen. My head felt like pressure, not Mm -hmm. a headache per se, Mm -hmm. but pressure. And um, so my nurse, or my nurse, my sister is a nurse um, and she came out the, so he, I delivered him on a Monday and she came Mm -hmm. out on Friday. Uh She was planning on coming anyway, but she looked at me and she said, okay, Haley, I don't like the way this looks. Your head is bothering you. Like, this is not something to mess around with. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go get a blood pressure cuff and we're going to take your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Um, So she took it and it was like one in the 140s over 90, I want to say. So up. And then I said, well, I was just really worried that my, that breastfeeding was like, something was going to happen if I right. went to the emergency room or something. Um, but that day actually that she arrived and after she took my blood pressure, mm-hmm. my son had his first checkup Okay. and on base, uh, you just see a family medicine doctor okay. for the first checkup, not a okay. pediatrician. Right. Um, and I'm actually really thankful that we did because when we came into the room and he checked my son, he turned to me and said, okay, now let's see how you're doing. And he um, looked, you know, checked everything. I said, my feet are really swollen. My head, I feel a little pressure in my head. He said, let's um, get some lab work done. So I immediately went down to the lab Mm -hmm. and got lab work done. And my liver enzymes were triple what they should have been. Oh. Um, So he was like, yeah, I, you know, your blood pressure is high. Um, your liver enzymes could be up because of the blood pressure coming up, but I want you to come back tomorrow and get a full, you know, the same lab work done and another blood pressure check. So the next day I come in and they'd come down just slightly. Um, but I still was feeling a little pressure, but still no headache or change in vision or anything. Mm -hmm. And he said, all right, let's, I'll send you back, come in the next day and do more blood work. Well, after I got home, my sister said, no, you're going to the emergency room. Yeah. This is nothing to play around with. So after a little bit of crying, because I didn't want (laughs) to leave my baby. Right. um, We all got in the car, my mom, my sister, my husband, my baby, and we dropped um, me off at the emergency room. My sister came in with me. Um, and my mom and my husband drove him around. He was sleeping, so they just kept him asleep, driving right. around. Um, so we get in there, and um, 
It's at the University of Nebraska Medical Center where I delivered the emergency department is. Right. And um, so I go and they said, what are you here for? I said, you know, I, I just had a baby and my blood pressure's high and I'm not feeling well. And they were like, get her back right away. Like they right. were not messing around. Right. They were really good about checking it right away and getting me um, admitted. Right. So when they checked it, I was, I think it was like, 159 over 95 Mm -hmm. so it was pretty uh, hot especially high for me as well sure sure um so i got admitted i got an iv and some tylenol but they Mm -hmm. wanted me to be checked they were sending their ob um their doctor that was on call down Mm -hmm. to see me Mm -hmm. and they ran more blood work and my liver enzymes had gone down drastically so that was good news okay from right. what they had been at the right. clinic just two days before. Right. Um, and as I was there, my blood pressure was steadily coming down. Um, after about an hour, I want to say it was back down to like 132 over 80, 82 or something like that. Right. Um, so it was coming down and the OBs came in. They asked me a lot of questions. Um, they were looking at my blood pressure readings throughout the time that I was there. And I was only, I'd only been there maybe two hours at this point. Right. Um, they were like, let's hold off on any blood pressure medications or magnesium. We just, we see that it's coming down by itself and you don't have any blurred vision or your headache isn't worsening or anything like that. Even with Tylenol, right. um, the Tylenol is helping things. Um, and so I asked the nurse there, I said, is cause I, we were still worried about COVID and everything, but where I was, was really secluded from the rest of the emergency room. And I was in my, I was in a enclosed room. It wasn't like a curtain or anything like that. Sure. And I said, can my baby come and can I feed him? And she said, yes. So, um, they safely brought him in and I fed him and then they took him back out. So that was like, I, I needed that. I felt right. like to help with my anxiety of my breastfeeding journey and stuff. But I knew that I needed to put myself first in this moment in order to take care of him. Right. Um, but it was, you know, a lot. And um, I feel like I'm scattering. I'm all no, over the place no, no, with this. No. Yeah. So did they but, eventually end up sending you home? Yes. Then? After okay. four hours, they were like, we feel good about you going home. Your blood uh-huh. pressure has gone down and stayed uh-huh. down. Right. Um, and you're, the Tylenol is helping with the headache. And right. Nothing's worsening. They said, right. if, when you go home, if anything worsens, you need to come back in. Sure. So sure. I got sure. home. Nothing worsened. Um And I started feeling improvements. My head started feeling better. I started Uh feeling a little bit more like myself, my sister. I felt better that my sister was there with me. Sure, sure. So, but I did do routine blood pressure and lab work at the base clinic Uh every, uh, I'd say, I want to say it was like every Monday and Wednesday for the next three weeks. Okay. So they kept up with it. And then I had a sure. couple of OB appointments after the reading and the lab work just okay. to see how I was feeling too. Gotcha. And gotcha. Um, I want to say after like a week and a half after I was uh, discharged from the emergency room, I was back down to like 120 over okay. 75 okay. or something. Okay. So it was really okay. coming down. Sure. Um, so all in all, I didn't have to receive you know, medication for it or anything like that, but did experiencing the emergency room. And, um, I'm really glad that everybody took it seriously. Yeah. I am curious. Did the, did the family medicine doctor, when your liver enzymes were five times what they should have been set to, say anything about going to the hospital then? Because I would have sent you to the hospital right then. Yeah, so I was a little surprised that he didn't, and I probably in that moment should have, and I'm glad that my sister was like, yeah, you need to go. I am surprised I mean, were the OB doctors like, did they say, I mean, so we, like, that could be a variant of help syndrome, which is like a severe form of preeclampsia. Yes. And so I think that was what my, what bothered my sister most too, was that nobody said you have preeclampsia. 
Right. Everybody was just like, you have high blood pressure. Right. And I know that's what it is, but like, she was like, I just want to hear somebody say that you have preeclampsia and that this is serious. And yes. Cause she was like, I feel like everybody's kind of, she's like, I'm glad that you're getting done the lab work and you're reading some stuff, but like, I, this is serious and it needs to be treated seriously. Right. And so nobody told me to go to the ER. My sister told me to go to the ER. Right. So that is a little, I mean, thank goodness she was there and forced me to because. Yeah. Yeah. I just. So. No, I'm glad everything worked out, but I'm, I'm really curious what the rationale was for not. Yeah. Sending I, you. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Maybe okay. I mean, yeah, I really in hindsight, I feel like we were all like, Okay, well, I guess you know, the readings are looking better, but your liver enzymes are not great and my sister's like, Yeah, you need to go. So Right. Um I mean, I wonder if people were like biased because you were otherwise healthy, healthy. and young and yeah. and they didn't want to see kind of what was in front of them. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I don't know. And luckily okay. I went Everything. when I did, but right. Right. if right. it was, you know, if it was somebody else in a different situation and they didn't have somebody to advocate and say, yes, you sure. need to go or support you to go. Right. I mean, it could have turned out a lot differently. So right. I don't, yeah, that's tough. I feel like there's still a lot of work to be done on the postpartum end because a yeah, lot of women, sure. a lot of women hear about preeclampsia while they're pregnant and the mm-hmm. you know solution deliver the baby, but I don't think a lot of women know or is informed about preeclampsia that can happen postpartum and right. how serious and dangerous it can be. So Right. Right. A lot right. of work to be done because, you know, we see our OB every four weeks and then every two weeks yeah. and every week and then six weeks come back, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? So mm-hmm. I, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well then as we wrap up, what would be your one favorite piece of advice that you would give to someone who's having a baby right now? Okay. Um, I thought about this one and uh-huh. I know everybody's different. Every personality is <laughs> different. I was like, I want to know everything there is to know. But uh-huh. I think it is really important to at least some, have some sort of um, childbirth education or course mm-hmm. completed just because I think it just gives you the power to make informed decisions and to be an advocate for yourself as well. Um, Absolutely. I just think in any sort of capacity, whatever that might be, if you want to read a book or take a course or whatever, I recommend your course. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just think that's really important to feel empowered and have some knowledge about what you're going into. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Haley, thank you so much for agreeing to come yes, to you, the you podcast. So I'm so glad I got to be a part of your experience and that you're sharing all of your knowledge and the things that you gained. Um, just a, a, a great birth story. Um, and you. even though things, you know, postpartum were a little rocky, I'm glad everything turned out well. Thank you. And yeah. um, I forgot to add one thing yeah. about postpartum too. Sure. Um, and during my pregnancy, I was very fortunate to see a pelvic floor physical therapist. Oh yes, we got it. Please say something is about really that. Really yes. underutilized slash um, insurance is a big factor in that right. too but luckily tricare um you can get a referral to see a pelvic floor pt okay and i thought it was so wonderful during my pregnancy um, how frequently did you see see her every week from 22 weeks on seriously so, seriously so i was really blessed because i was experiencing some really bad low back pain right and it i mean it was night and day i it helped nice. so much. Um, so that was really wonderful. And then after postpartum, um, uh-huh. I still got to see the pelvic floor PT. I did experience prolapse. Um, okay. So that was really a great resource once I found out that I did uh, have prolapse um, to continue going to see the pelvic floor PT. And it's helped right. a lot. Nice. Um, so I can't speak... Uh, more highly about right. pelvic floor PT. If you're able to, um, go then see do one. It for yes. Sure. Yes. yes. 
yes, yes, yes. yes. So All I forgot right. well, to say my... that. I wanted to make yeah, sure. No, I'm glad you said that. Yes, yes, that's really, really important. And then where can women connect with you? You can say nowhere. It's totally yeah, No, um, I'm on Instagram. It's um, at H-A-K Oak, so O-A-K-E-S underscore uh-huh. four. You can reach out to me there. I'm happy to answer anything. Okay. All right. Awesome. We'll link that in the show notes. Well, again, thank you so much, Haley, for agreeing to come onto the podcast. It was so delightful to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor to be on the podcast. Wasn't that a beautiful birth story? I so enjoyed chatting with Haley and we were recording on video and I got to see her sweet baby boy as well. So love, love, love talking with you, Haley. Thanks for being on. Now, after every episode where I have a guest on, I do something called Dr. Nicole's Notes, where I talk about my top takeaways from the conversation. Here are my Dr. Nicole's Notes from my conversation with Haley. Okay, this one's going to seem a little bit maybe out of the blue, but it's something that I think about a lot because people send me messages on Instagram quite a bit about pregnancy tests and am I pregnant, am I not pregnant? And just a quick word about pregnancy tests. Haley talked about how she bought a bunch of pregnancy tests and confirmed at home that she was pregnant. You don't have to buy expensive pregnancy tests. Uh, Pregnancy tests, all of them pick up very low levels of the HCG hormone, as low as 20. And for reference, when you're pregnant, it'll very quickly go up into the thousands range. So they work very well. You can just get dollar store tests if you want. want. Don't feel like you have to get expensive tests. And I'm not knocking Haley. I would have done the same thing, buy a bunch of tests and see if it was positive or not, you know, just because of the difference. But in general, you can just use cheap pregnancy tests. You don't have to use anything complicated or fancy. They don't work any differently. Okay. Number two, Haley knew that she had a supportive team going into her birth and that allowed her to feel relieved. It allowed her to feel supported and it allowed her to feel empowered. Can't you see how big of a difference that makes going into your birth in order to start off feeling that way? What if she went in and they didn't support her and she just found that out when she got to the hospital? Well, my birth preparation course and my birth plan class teaches you the questions to ask so you know ahead of time whether or not they support what is in your birth plan. That's what she was talking about when she talked about the questions that she asked of her team. So I highly, highly encourage you to join me in my live class on March 21st so you can feel that way too. Relieved, supported, empowered going into your birth. Register the, for the class at drnicolerinkins.com forward slash register. Also, one of the things Haley talked about is that she had that compromise or that sort of discussion on induction. And she chatted about how she reached out to me to ask for clarification. Well, this is one of the benefits of joining the birth plan class is that as a bonus, you get to be a member of my inner circle community. That's my private Facebook community where you can ask questions. Now I cannot guarantee that I can answer every single question. I have to be honest and transparent here, but I certainly do go into the group every single day And I will answer questions that I think will help um, folks in general. So big questions like induction or things like that um, in order to help provide that additional level of support if need be. And you can also get feedback from other members in the group about their experience as well. So that's another benefit of joining the birth plan class. Just wanted to throw that out there for you as well. Again, drnicolerankins.com forward slash register. Okay, number three. What happened with the management of her postpartum blood pressure was not, um, I would say ideal. You know, I can't say that I know exactly what's going on because I don't have her records and things like that to see what her lab work was and her blood pressures were. But postpartum preeclampsia is very serious and we need to take it very seriously. I would have sent her to the hospital, as I mentioned, in order to get some closer monitoring for some blood pressures, recheck the labs, things like that, maybe do magnesium, which can help prevent seizures or strokes. So I just want to say in general, like take elevated blood pressure and pregnancy seriously. Also take preeclampsia seriously. It is one of the leading causes of maternal morbidity and mortality. So 
we just really need to stay on top of that. Again, I can't speak specifically because I don't have her records and things like that, but I, based on what she told me, would have managed things a bit differently. Okay, the last thing is I want to put out, put in that plug for pelvic PT as well. Pelvic PT, we just underutilize it so much. It's not something that OBGYNs are exposed to. So we don't know necessarily to recommend it. Like we don't work with pelvic physical therapists during our training or anything like that. So some of us don't know. What you don't know, you can't recommend. But definitely check out whether your insurance can cover some pelvic PT, whether that is during your pregnancy or after your pregnancy. I've heard so many people say, especially after pregnancy, that it's super duper helpful. So do check that out as well. All right. So there you have it. Do me a solid share this podcast with a friend. Sharing is caring. It helps me to reach and serve more people, which is the heart, soul, and the passion of my work. And I would appreciate your support in doing that. Also subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to me right now. And if you feel so inclined, leave an honest review in Apple Podcasts. It helps other women to find the show, helps the show to grow. Or just shoot me a message on Instagram. I'm on Instagram at Dr. Nicole Rankins. I truly love what you love to hear what you have to say about the podcast and how the podcast helped you. Any suggestions, any feedback, um, just drop into my DMs on Instagram at Dr. Nicole Rankins. All right, so that's it for this episode. Do come on back next week and remember that you deserve a beautiful pregnancy and birth. <laughs> <laughs>